So what happens is one day I went and pick up my daughter and I see them all playing uh, in daycare with these spinners, these Lego spinners. And, and I asked the educators, what, what is that? What are they doing? They're battling each other on a tabletop. Um, but obviously Lego pieces are square. They don't spin. So it was a bit lame to watch them trying, but they were resilient. So I asked the educators what, what are they trying to do, spinning square Lego pieces. And they said since they're not allowed to bring their own toys into childcare, they made their own, which remind me a lot of, of my childhood with my older brothers when we were making absolutely anything out of cardboard and a bit of sticky tape and marbles, elastic bands. Drain clothes pins, we could make a pinball game, we could make a frizzle game. And, and there was nothing, nothing like playing with your own created toys or customizing the toys that you already had. When I saw them playing, I have a moment of constructive discontent like no other time before in my life. It was just uh, very frustrating to see them trying to spin something that is square and doesn't spin. Um, if you think about it, in the modern era, any great uh, idea has a very frustrated designer behind, uh, motivated because of the constructive discontent. They're trying to solve a problem that nobody else seems to care about. So I started playing with them a little bit, trying to learn uh, about the rules of the game and what was causing the problem. And the first session for me was like how to figure out a brief. And all I, all I need to know is how this game is played, who wins and why. The objective and how you come up with the brief for them was how to produce the unbeatable spinner. We realized that there was no actual round pieces in the Lego box that they could use. So I offered myself, I said, okay, I have a 3D printer. I can definitely 3D print you some pieces. And so you can actually play and spin your Lego pieces. So instead of 3D printing the pieces and bringing them the final product, I talked to the educators and said, why don't we just bring the 3D printer to the class and show them what it is and how it works and see if they have an interest and they can also learn a little bit how design works and eventually we got carried away <laughs> and we ended up making a six week workshop program uh, one two hours a week with the kids where we just played and we brought the computer and we show them how it works how the 3d printer works how it communicates with a computer why it's important to know how to read, how to write, learn your numbers properly so you can type them into a machine that it can speak to a 3D printer so you can actually produce a product that you're interested in that it doesn't exist for you at the moment. So that was the point of bringing the 3D printer that they could actually use and make something that at the moment it didn't exist for them. So we make a Lego spinner, each one of us, and then we battle each other and we saw where some pieces were failing and why others were winning more often. Uh, so we did an iteration and it was interesting to see how they came back with improved models, checking each other's pieces and being competitive and uh, it was quite fun. Most of the time we underestimate preschoolers and five-year-olds and, and kids in general, like they, they make uh, children soldiers in Africa, why cannot we provide them with this type of information at these early stages of their lives? It's really important and I think they, they got it very well and for me they're my little designer soldiers. That's, that's, that's the, the joy out of this project. And that's when we introduced the 3D printing and the additive manufacturing process, uh, showing a video of well, what it is, how it works. Um, it's pretty much like icing on a cake that you just go around and around, but it's smaller scale. So it was pretty nice to see the reactions to the videos we, we showed. And we design also eggs and dinosaurs and all sorts of fun things just for the sake of having fun. Uh, but eventually at the end of the day, the end product was what they were excited about and, and we couldn't stop. We designed the, the bottom bit, but then we also designed a top bit that would help them uh, spin better. We just designed bumpers and all sorts of shapes and forms. 
uh, which is pretty fantastic to see the reactions of the creativity exploding just in front of their eyes with just a little machine. Uh, it was very great to see. Then we did sketching, uh, expression of ideas. Uh, you have a concept, you have tested it with a model, you have played with it, but then you may not have the pieces or the model to play with in order to produce what the idea you just came up with. So the importance of knowing how to draw, how to draw sketches, and then how to turn the sketches into technical drawings that work with computers. So computers can't really learn the information from a hand sketch uh, yet. <laughs> Maybe they will in the future. Uh, but it is important to draw top views, front views, side views, bottom views. It was quite funny this one. There was one of the guys who, uh, after me showing them how to do all these views, they gave me this piece of paper and they did the top view on the top and it was exactly the top view as you look from the top. But on the reverse, it was the bottom view, which made total sense because that's exactly what I did with the piece when I explained that. And then is the day that I brought the 3D printer to the class. Oh my God, they were just out of the moon. They have been waiting for this day the whole week. We usually did this on Fridays and they've been the whole week reminding me, are you bringing the 3D printer on Friday? Yes. <laughs> so we also taught them how to operate uh, basic operations of a 3D printer. The excitement of feeling responsible for your own print and just getting your result at the end of it. That was the, the feeling that got them excited and, and that sense of getting your own thing that belongs to you because you did it and you designed it. So that's what I really want them to experience. I think another important lesson was that they could use a recycled material for the filament, but also if there were any scraps or leftovers, you could just grab them and melt them and create again another recycled filament to use in your next piece that you need. It was important for them to learn not just only the design process, but designing with recycled materials and designing from cradle to cradle. Once we figured out the LEGO system dimensions, then we were able to design and then 3D print these pieces which will actually fit in the LEGO system and be combined with any other LEGO pieces. So they would be creating infinite variations of this combination of three plus the other LEGO pieces that are available. And these are the final pieces. They made a top to help spinning that fits in there. And they made the bottom cone that also fits in there. Plus, you can put in between any Lego piece that you want. So they ended up making all sorts of platforms and they added here, you know, you can, you know, kids, when they're creative and they're happy, they could make anything. So it was quite fun, uh, fun to watch the amount of different variations of this. But also I like the fact that you could just use the three, put them together and have a spin. While we were doing the project, we found out that if we created an account at idea.lego.com and uploaded all the pictures into our project, and then the project became popular with more than 10,000 votes, then... The pieces would become part of the official LEGO repository of pieces. And I thought that was the best outcome for them to have some sort of legacy for everyone else to use these pieces out of this school project. So on graduation day, we gave them a certificate of completion because they completed a course in uh, you know, design, I believe, uh, with their learning outcome. So now they know what constructive discontent is um, and how to use your sketches to express your ideas and how to turn those drawings into technical drawings to speak to a machine and how machines are important for the manufacturing process and to you know, make absolutely anything that you have in your mind uh, or even things that you don't even have in your mind yet. The beauty of design is that the same method applies for anything. You gather data with clients, with questioners, with 
user trips, focus groups, personas. You get the data, you analyze it, you synthesize it, then you produce ideas uh, through sketches, design options to improve that iteration. And then you produce technical drawings to speak to machines, to manufacture and produce more details uh, with the help of machines or without the help of machines. But whatever you're applying all that, it actually produces a, a serious, decent piece of work and design. And you could use it to design a playlist for a wedding or to design a restaurant or to design a house or to design a car. It doesn't matter. It works time after time. You could even use it to design a 3D printed spinning piece that works with Lego.